All right. So I just got through interviewing Grant. We did an hour and a half. And this is my first time interviewing him, really spending some time with him one on one. And I got to admit, it, it was a good experience. He, he's he's legit. It, it was cool. Um, I have a I have a whole new not that I didn't have great respect for him before. But now that we've actually spent some time together, I have a whole new respect and perspective of who he is, what he's about, uh, the whole nine yards. Um, I did confront him on home ownership. You guys know that he talks about you know buying a house is the worst investment ever. Talked to him about the lawsuits, him being sued by investors into his uh, investment funds and everything else. What else did we talk about? We talked about the real estate market, state of the economy, uh, sales, you know, a little bit of his background and a story. It, it, it was a great interview. Had a lot of fun. And I know you're going to enjoy it. So I'm just going to get right into it and let me know in the comments what you think. Last piece of advice to the real estate agents, okay? Good to see you, buddy. You too, man. How you doing? Good. I'm doing good. You in uh, South Florida? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I just got back from Vegas. I did uh, spoke at EXP Con. Oh, good. Good. How was that? It was good. Yeah. It was a really, really good one. And uh, caught a little bug. My voice is a little off but uh mm. next week i'll be in uh, did you Miami. get a headache first yeah it was sore throat headache yeah so you're gonna get the thing that's going around everywhere yeah yeah it's been like two weeks my voice has been shy this is the best i've sounded actually in a couple of days but y'all be in miami next week like doing an event. And, and successful what's that you got a great you got a very nice masculine uh good voice <laughs> I'll be in Miami next week speaking to a bunch of agents. So I'm supposed to get up with Ryan. So maybe if you're down there, I'll see okay. you. Too. Yeah. What day are you coming down? You know, I'm flying in Wednesday. So I'll be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, go back Sunday. Okay. I think we leave Thursday. Mm. Uh, for, okay. uh, I'm going to look at some stuff in Chicago. We got under contract. So Chicago, Chicago, <laughs> downtown. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that place is a mess. No, oh, not downtown. Yeah. Yeah. We went there. I don't know how about a couple months ago. We'd never been there before. It was rough. Yeah. Place yeah. is rough. Well, okay, cool, Matt. Go. Yeah. I, uh, Who, who's see. your audience, First, Ricky? Real estate agents. Okay. Yep. I, uh, I first saw you, um, on Audible actually, 2011, uh, the beginning of my, uh, you know, self-development journey. I, I ran into the 10 X rule, bro. Okay. Complete, completely just rewired myself. But, um, that was going to ask you, bro, like right there, just right there. That how'd you come up with that? Cause 10 X is now a movement. Yeah. You're wearing a 10 X health shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like what, what, what was the, which I've looked into 10 X health. I'm doing it. It's it's that's phenomenal. So, but what what yeah, is we, what, hey Ricky, we have 10x health, 10x insurance, 10x mm -hmm. law. Uh, I mean, the whole thing just like the 10x growth conference. Mm -hmm. uh, we put 10x on all our buildings, 10x living now. Mm -hmm. um, what else do we have? This 10x, 10x farms and ranches. And so <laughs> what happened was uh after 2008, I tried to I wrote a seller be sold and I wrote the closed survival guide uh to to really uh, try to in, infiltrate and, and widen my message to salespeople and sales organizations because I was dependent upon one vertical. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, uh, you know, as a result of that contraction, that, you know, terrible recession that happened and affected so many families that I was dependent upon one vertical. Which was what? It was automotive. So Selling nobody cars? in real estate even knew me. Nobody in real estate knew me. Nobody in network marketing knew me. Uh, nobody in insurance, healthcare, finance. Nobody knew me except this one automotive vertical, which I, which I had done very well in. Right? You mean you mean back then? You what you're saying is back then you were in like teaching car salespeople how to sell better. Yeah, I was working with the manufacturers. Like I was working yeah. with Nissan, uh, Mercedes, Lexus to talk about how they could make their sales processes more effective. More How efficient. did you get those deals? You went straight to. The, yeah, we went straight to the. Uh, you know, I had a name at that time, so they were reaching out to me because I had this very forward. 
uh, idea about transparency. This is before, this is before like you couldn't get any information. The consumer couldn't get any information mm -hmm. uh, from the car dealer. There was no internet. Really, you couldn't go find out what your car was worth. And I was telling people since 2000, like you need to give people transparency. You need to give them the information before they ask for the information. Real buyers want to know what the price is before they look at something. They don't want you to build value. This is very important for your real estate agents too. They don't want the whole dog and pony show, build value, show me four bedrooms, and then tell me what the price is. Like, I, I, I can't really assess value in my mind. I don't assess real value until I know how much money is associated with the donation, uh, the food, you know, the house, the car, whatever, the, the, the restaurant, whatever it is, right? So anyway, I was telling car, uh, car manufacturers this and I became very uh, well known for this, what was called information assisted selling it was transparency and it was initiating price sensitive issues. Uh, this is very relevant today to, to for, for a real estate agent. Okay. What does that mean? You're like sharing basically what the car's worth as you're showing the car to a buyer. What, I, would what does be, it mean? I would be sharing payments, price, down payments, interest rates, all the price sensitive stuff, the things uh -huh. that people are most concerned about. If it was a house, hey guys, welcome to your new home. I already have a package for you on payments, down payments, options, price. I know how low they'll go. I can give you comps. I'm going to show you why this is a great deal. But before we do all that, do you want to start? Do you want to see the inside of the house or the outside? What's most important to you? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to I'm trying to basically. Uh, the concept is when you go to Thanksgiving buffet, you go to Thanksgiving and there's the big, you know, the whole table's got food on it. You're not really hungry anymore. You know, but if, if they hide all the food and you smell it, mm -hmm. but you can't mm -hmm. see it, you're starving. But once you feed somebody, then they don't care. They're like, oh, as long as you're going to give me everything I need to know, now I need to decide what color, how it's going to be equipped. Is this the right kitchen, the right view, whatever. So anyway, I was doing that. 2008 comes. I had 20,000 clients, 10,000, 20,000 prospective, prospective qualified clients. And 2008 comes within three months. I had less than maybe 3,000 that could do business with me if they wanted to, and, and they weren't spending money either. So anyway, I wrote those books, the first sales books to broaden my message. This will be important for you when you transition from real estate and you will. Um, when you, when I, when I wanted to broaden my message so that I could start talking to the Morgan Stanley's, the Ashley furnitures, uh, the Wells Fargo's of the world. And when I was done with that, I started looking at what I did wrong because we almost went bankrupt in 2010 because uh, I mean, it was close enough. It was close enough to say, Hey, I was terrified. Right. And um, I sat down for three days and just said, Hey, what did I do wrong here? I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? I didn't participate in all the loans. I didn't participate in the hundred percent mortgages. I didn't at this do point. You weren't in real estate yet. Right. Buying real yeah, estate. I, and stuff. I owned, uh, I owned, uh, at that time I owned 600 units. I just sold 2,200 units in Tucson right before the crash. Wow. Did you do, was that just a strike of luck or did you kind no, of feel something? No, it, it, it was, it was, uh, I, I, you know, it was, it was, I think I'd like to take credit for it being a smart thing. Um, if it was luck, I've been lucky a bunch of times. <laughs> so, um, I basically down for, downsized the portfolio from 2,200 units down to 600 units in a, in a strip center. Mm. And when 2008 hit, really, really the, the, the whole, all the damage was 2009. It wasn't immediate. Mm -hmm. The shopping center cash flowed and the apartments in San Diego cash flowed uh, every single month. In fact, the rents picked up in 2010. So that was a genius move for me, but I couldn't liquidate. I couldn't get any of my money. So the money in my business, in the consulting business and the speaking business was slaughtered. Mm -hmm. uh, so I sat down for three days and said, okay, this is never going to happen to me again. This is 2010. This is only 12 years ago. I'm worth, at that time, I'm worth, I don't know, a couple million bucks. 
but I'm thinking we're going to, it's all going to go away. And uh, I sat down and figured out what I did wrong, dude. I'm, I'm on TV and I'm listening. I'm watching my TVs in my office and I'm writing. What, what did I do wrong? What Everything, just a complete list of everything I screwed up on. And I keep hearing in the background, too big to fail, too big to fail, too big to fail, too big mm-hmm. to fail. Mm-hmm. At the same time, my bank's calling me saying, hey, you have $50 million in loans. We're calling them all. While, while the bank's calling me for $50 million in loans, uh, Goldman Sachs is bailing out Warren Buffett and Goldman Sachs and Wall Street are bailing out Ford. And I keep hearing, too big to fail, too big to fail, too big to mm-hmm. fail. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Fuck, I ain't, I'm too small. <laughs> I'm a little nobody with 50 million in debt and the bank's going to call my debt. The other thing I learned right there, sorry to go on a long rant here, but um, you brought me back into this moment of drama. And the other thing I learned is if you owe 50 million to the bank, you got a problem. Yeah. The people that owed 5 billion, no problem at all. We'll work it out with you. Mm. So I had this massive discovery. I'm like, I need to go 10 times bigger than I am. Mm Mm-hmm. And that became the 10X rule. I actually wrote that book uh, about orders of magnitude, multiplying behaviors, never be in one vertical. If you're in one vertical, you should be in 10. <laughs> if you have 3,000 customers, you probably need 30,000. Whatever, whatever the multiplier is, right? If you think it's going to take one sales call, it's probably going to take 10, maybe 100. Mm-hmm. So it sets the expectation right. Wow. So, so you had 50 million in debt. What was the assets worth that were under the. Well, they were worth, they were worth more than 50 million, but you know, when they want you to liquidate. Yeah. If they want to call it in a liquidate in a, in a recession. Yeah. There's no way to liquidate. You, you, you know, I mean, what's going on in real estate right now? If you're, why would, why would they want to, why would they want to call your debt? If the uh, assets were worth more than the debt and then why wouldn't they just want to restructure a deal with you because I had cash. So if you, this is the other thing I learned, you do not want to keep money around. The people that don't have money got restructured. The people that had, the people that didn't have money got restructured. The people that had money had to pay down their loans Ah, because they, they know you have money and they want the money. They're liquid, dude. My loans were never late. They said it was a technical default. They said, you're in technical default. I said, well, well, I've never been late. I make all my payments. I've never missed a payment. And they said our, our DCRs, the D, uh, the debt coverage ratio, because all debt coverage ratios dropped. And but the other thing, the thing, the mm. technical default was because my net worth had changed. Mm. Well, goddamn, the whole world's net worth changed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was called a technical default. And the other thing is the bank that I owed the fifty million to failed before they called my loan. That bank failed, San Diego National Bank. It's all in records. And one of the reasons I love real estate is all the stuff I say, people can go back and look at it. Like it's there's a record on everything in real estate. That's the beautiful thing. Like this isn't Bitcoin or, or NFTs. It's There's a trackable mm-hmm. property, address, <laughs> deeds, titles, et cetera. And um, the... The San Diego National Bank failed where I had all the loans. A new bank was given money by the federal government, $500 million to to bail out San Diego National, really to buy the bank and steal it from this other guy. Yeah. Then given funding. So the new bank came in and said, hey, we want to take we want to clean up all our loans. The Mm. problem for everybody out there, they can't do that in one weekend. So that took about 18 months for them to clean that loan up. And it gave me time to restructure the loan with another bank. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So the 10x. So you you lit that that you you owed 50, you realized too big to fail. You need to be 10 times bigger. And then you just came up with 10x and wrote this book out of that. Dude, I wrote I wrote the 10x rule. Uh I don't have I don't is have ten, is, was 10x rule your first? No, no, that was my fourth or fifth so, book. So sell and be sold. And um I wrote it, dude. I wrote it as a therapy session. <laughs> like I wrote that book so fast. It was like, wow. Oh my God, orders of magnitude. You got a magnum. You, you, you need more customers. You know, it's a that's very simple, right? Say again. That's your best seller. 
No, my best books? seller, my best sellers aren't books. My best sellers are the webinars. <laughs> but out of your books, though, the ten oh, yeah, uh, probably it's probably yeah. sold more copies. Yeah, yeah. Um, How long did it take you to write it? I probably wrote that book in uh, three weeks. Wow. Yeah, but that was a lot longer than Seller Be Sold. I wrote Seller Be Sold in three days. Yeah. And uh, that, well, that next book was you were just though. like throwing up. You just had all this going yeah. on with what was happening. You just had to get it on paper. I, I could hear it in your out. voice because I listened to the audible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we did the audible. Okay. So the audible, what I do is I write a book and then we release it. We get feedback on it. 10 months later, I did the audible portion because now I know what I left out. Like when you go, when you write a book in three weeks, you're going to leave a lot of, a lot of stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. These are not books that I'm writing. These are books that I'm I'm writing this and playing with the information, right? Because mm -hmm. if you go back and listen to the 10X rule, listen mm -hmm. to the things that I said I would do next. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them. Hey, the next time this happens, I'll have $500 million worth of debt. Mm -hmm. I have $2 billion worth of debt today. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said, I'll go from 600 units to 6,000. We have 12,000 units. I 20 X everything. Yeah. And so, um, I won't be in one vertical. I'll be in 10. Okay. We're probably in 80 or 90 different verticals today. We have mm -hmm. 11 companies. I had one company back then we have 11 and we're adding six more. I'm not, I know this sounds like I'm bragging and everything, but I'm just like spitballing with you. If you're a real estate agent looking to up your game and you want to go get 30 more listings, I'm going to put a link below of the replay of my 30 listing challenge. And all I can say is that once you see it, you can't unsee it. That That is, I'm living the 10X rule. Yeah. I wasn't in the health business. No, we there's are. no doubt. There's no doubt. I um, And then when did you start actually creating content for social media? Because after I read the 10X rule... Then I probably saw you on YouTube, I don't know, a year later. Come yeah. to find out you had been on social media for a while. When did you start? You know, you, you were very early in that game, right? 2012. How did, I wasn't early. Well, 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 earlier than a lot of people. Well, I right? mean, Vaynerchuk, Vaynerchuk was there five, five or six Vaynerchuk years Vaynerchuk basically was. invented social media. Yeah. Right. So my first, I think my first post was 11 or 12. Yeah. So what, so did you see Vaynerchuk or what, what prompted you to do that and no, start? The creating? 10X rule did. I didn't have an audience, bro. Yeah. So, you know, you know, they say, Hey man, when the, when the, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I write, the, I, I come up with this concept. I have to 10X my business. Mm -hmm. I'm worth a couple million dollars at the time and I'm scared. This is why I tell people like, like being, a, you know, having a million, a couple million dollars is not what you might think it is. It's, it's a scary moment. Cause you know, you don't know how to get it bigger cause you hadn't done that yet. You just did mm -hmm. 2 million. You put a couple million bucks. I got a family. I got, you know, you want, you starting to want new things when you have a little bit of money. I got family coming. I got two kids now. I'm trying to expand my business. I'm scared. The contraction happens now. I go backwards. Right. So, when I say 10X, I got a 10X. And then I'm like, how, dude? I, nobody knows me. I can't go yeah. door to door the way I have for the last 20 years. And then swear to you, two days, within two days, a guy shows up in my office and said, you need to get a Facebook account. I said, Facebook? I'm about to go bankrupt. What you talking about Facebook for? And it was, to me, it was like it was completely stupid. And then I remembered, hey, bro. You need a 10X. You need to look at every avenue possible. You cannot be closed-minded right now about new ideas. This is, but wait, Facebook wasn't even a thing yet. Yeah. And start, I, I personally started the Facebook account. I started a personal page, uh, which was a mistake because you don't want a personal page. You want a fan page. You, you mm -hmm. want a business page that can expand to, there's, I think we got 7 million people on a Facebook page now. Mm-hmm. And then as, as technologies came out, I started playing with them and learning to use them. I didn't have video. I didn't have bloggers or video guys running around documenting anything. I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue. There was no editing, no lights, no podcast. Did and you film it yourself in the beginning? 
Dude, oh, one hundred percent. I still do it today. Like, I, just, I remember because I remember a video. You were standing in front of a camera. I'm. And I'm gonna show you. I still do these today. Okay, watch this. Watch this right here. Because this has allowed me to become a. This is allowed the the actual actual pra practice, the practitioner, mm -hmm. has allowed me to become a marketer to learn marketing for myself, not delegate it to somebody else. Watch, watch this. Nobody's seen this. Uh, including my office. Uh, let me see if I can turn this around real quick. Nobody's seen this in the world. You're going to love this. Okay. Let me see if you can see it. Hey, 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 what you doing here? You're wasting time, energy, and resources and creativity. Grant Cardone here. I have something I want to give you right there. Get out of here right now. Go right there. Let's get your money right. Let's get your future right. Let's go create something. Okay, I'll see you. Okay. So I did that. That's going to be dropped on porn sites. <laughs> Do I'm what? Not, I'm You're going to run ads on porn sites? That That is going to interrupt somebody going to a porn site. And I'm going to be like, dude, what are you going there? That is Damn. the most trafficked, most trafficked sites in the world. Damn. Go there. Jewish, Israeli, like people of faith go to porn sites. They don't want to be there. Damn. They don't want to be there. And I'm going to interrupt that guy and say, don't waste your energy here, dude. What are you looking for here? Get out of here and go hit this link. So I'm, I'm just sharing that with you. And that'll wow. be controversial. And people will be like, oh, what are you doing there? No, no. What are mm -hmm. you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm advertising there. <laughs> wow. So they, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can advertise. Wow. And every, ooh. okay. So anyway, the point is, the point is, right. I am so committed. And then the lead, but the leads you get from that, you know, <laughs> you know where they came from. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you, Look, people do people do dumb stuff every day. Oh, I don't want to have in my life. You know, yeah, uh, they're watching Fox News. Not much better. CNN. Yeah. Not much better. What do you, What do you think about what's going on right now over there in Israel? Well, I think it's terrible. Yeah, I, I, I think it's terrible. Uh, I, I will say though, because I have been, I'm a person that has been attacked. Okay, I'm not comparing the the the, the problems that Israel and Palestine have to my problems. But if you hit me, I'm going to handle the situation. And I promise you, I'm coming back 10 times harder than you hit me. Ten uh, I just went, I just went through this three years of a lawsuit, class action lawsuit. I've had, uh, the Real Deal, New Republic, Huffington Post, bunch of podcasters, people that called themselves my friends and YouTubers, trash me for two and a half years mm. with headlines. He's a fraud. He's a scam. He's a con artist. He, 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 he. Well, they're just doing it for likes and clicks. Yeah. But let me tell you something. It came out Friday. Grant Cardone's been exonerated. No fraud. No misrepresentation. No claims. No false claims. No financial harm. Uh, three years, they've, they've looked through every little, you know, the courts have looked at everything. Complete exoneration. Okay. Was it now, somebody that I was just point, mad at you? Or was uh, it somebody Was it somebody that was just mad at you? Or did they really think you did something wrong? What, no, what was it about? They're just trying to hold me hostage, trying to get money from a guy that's got money. Mm -hmm. Okay. One person out of 14,000 investors that invested $5,000 twice uh, tried, to, tried to hold me hostage. And I spent a million dollars fighting it. I won everything. And now I'm going to go after Real Deal, New Republic, Huffington Post. I'm naming them. Scum magazines trying to tear mm. and disparage and cause damage to people's reputation, their brands, their families, and their business. And I'm going to mm. hit them back like uh, Israel hit uh, Hamas. Mm. And people should. I can't blame you. I got to tell you, man, you come, you come after my family, my brand, my name, anything mm -hmm. that I value, my church. I'm coming back after you so hard. So because I don't want other people doing it in the future. Yeah. At least I want them to think about it twice. You you haven't. I thought I, I think I saw you said you haven't been sued that many times, huh? I've been sued three times in 35 years. It's crazy. It's nuts. Crazy good. Yeah. Crazy good. I mean, in, in this world uh, we live in. Yeah. You're like a uh, 
I remember a video a long time ago. I don't know if you remember. I'm sure you remember this. You were having dinner. Hey, by the way, wait, let me just say, we won all three. Of them. We won all three suits. Yeah. I have been audited four times by the IRS. I won all four audits. Mm -hmm. So a lot of yeah, a lot of people do say, oh, the CE, uh, the, the the SEC is coming after Grant, and you know all this stuff, and I've seen all that. Yeah, the, the, the SEC has the SEC. The beautiful thing about being public. And being, uh, we've raised you know uh, one billion dollars over the internet and 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 bought I don't know a couple billion dollars worth of real estate. The SEC knows every fund I do. I have to go through the SEC to get approved. Yeah. yeah. So the moment you go through the SEC for an approval uh, or admission, that they, they're they're gonna know what you're doing. Like they I have offered, everything. True story. I offered the SEC. I said, guys. Rather than you guys worried about what a guy like me does, why don't I just put you on my account and you can have open access 24 seven to my checking accounts. So you can see where all the money goes because I'm yeah. not, I'm, even though I'm noisy, I'm noisy, I'm loud, I'm boisterous. I make big claims. I like, that doesn't mean that's how I run my business. Mm. Okay. And I think that they think like a lawyer, an ambulance mm. chaser, Oh, dude, we're going to be able to catch this guy doing something. No, you're never going to catch me doing anything wrong because I don't do anything wrong. And I have mm -hmm. great financial discipline. When money comes in, it goes to one place. I don't touch it. I know I'm being looked at. And I would never, ever mismanage or, you know, uh, commingle funds. That, that's why mm -hmm. a lot of real estate syndicators go out of business because they commingle their assets or they cross them. And they should. Yeah. Yeah. Big no, no. Well, speaking of like being loud and everything, I mean, when I post, <clears throat> oh, I'm going to have, I'm going to interview grants, you know, half the people are like, hell yeah, we love him. Right. And the other half are like, don't interview him. Don't give him a platform. This, that, and the other. It's kind of like a, a, you've got this super polarizing. It's, uh, it do you, do so you feel cool. like that's a, that's a must, right? Like, you know, half the people hate Trump. You feel like that's a must to have that polarizing image. Well, I'm not. That wasn't ever. Did, did you do that on purpose? Huh? Do you feel like it's a must? And did you do it on purpose? No, I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't. I didn't do it on purpose. I did it because I'm honest. And I'm like, why? Why? Why would I be a politician when I'm not a politician? If you ask me what color I like, I'm best. I'm gonna tell. I'm not gonna like tell. I'm gonna tell you what color I like the best. If you ask me if buying a home is a good investment, even if you, if it's a real estate convention, I'm gonna be like, no, it ain't a good investment. Sell sell the houses. Don't don't get high on your own supply. Mm. So, sell the house, collect the commission, take the commission, and go buy real estate to cash flows because homes don't cash flow. So, and I've got real estate agents watching. So let <laughs> so let's dig let's dig into that. I know you own a house, right? I own two homes. Right. You own two oh, homes, three, actually. I'm three sorry. homes, don't buy yeah. a house, make it make sense. Dude, they're bad deals. Mm -hmm. They're bad deals. I, I, you know, most people do not make as much money as they claim they made on the home. Mm -hmm. It's like the guy being in Vegas playing blackjack for three hours. He gets in the elevator, going to his room. How'd you do? Oh man, I broke even. Now you didn't break even, bro. You wasted three hours down there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's right. the same thing with a house. Oh my God, yeah. we made a hundred grand. Yeah, you for, you left out the property taxes. You forgot the interest you paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, you forgot that you had a, a two hundred grand tied up that could have been earning twelve or fifteen percent a year. Mm -hmm. Like you're not calculating all the costs. Now, do some people yeah. make money in homes? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I made. I would. I had a house in L.A. I had a house in La Jolla. I made. I had a house. One house in La Jolla. I broke even on, which means I lost money. Okay. I broke even. I, I bought it for 850. I sold it for like 860. Got caught in the market account, or what happened? It, yeah, it was a shit market. I bought the house across the street, bought it for 3 million and made 6 million dollars on it. I'm not counting though the interest, my money was tied up, the maintenance, the landscaping, all the stuff I did. Mm -hmm. I'm not even adding mm -hmm. that. So, it was yeah. a 6 million dollar gross. Now I got to pay taxes on that. I moved to the next house. I put, I, I basically did a 1031. Okay. A tricky Ricky. 
I do a 1031 on a single family home. I pulled it off. I'm beyond the audits now. So I got away with it. And uh, it was legitimate. It was actually scrutinized. Uh, I bought a house in Los Angeles and I made what did I make on that house. Uh, I'm not saying you can't make money on a house. Yeah. Both of these, both of these, by the way, were trophy assets in irreplaceable locations. Mm -hmm. The LA house I sell to the Waltons for I think 17, 18 million. I made, I don't know, I had like what did I make on that house? I made seven, eight million dollars in that house. I'm still yeah. saying, man, these are terrible investments. Well, <clears throat> any investment can be terrible. I think what you're saying is, is you might make money, you might not, just like you know, a lot of other investments, but they're better investments out there. That's right. Yeah. Because let me tell you about the better investment. I took the money I made from the Los Angeles house. This is 2012. I have to, I'm redoing my whole life. I'm like, man, I bought two homes. I had one small business. I have no social presence. I'm in one vertical. And I'm like, I've done something wrong here. I had most of my assets. Most of my capital was tied up in homes. I uh -huh. said, Elena, we're going to sell the house in LA. Our family was there. Our friends were there. So we're going to do the most painful thing we can do. We're selling the house in LA. I'm going to get the, I had $11 million of equity in that house, $12 million of equity. I'm going to take the $12 million of equity and I'm going to buy an apartment complex in Florida. We are going to go rent where we live. Mm -hmm. And we're going to move out of the state of California. We moved to Miami. I rented an office. I rented a house. I used the 12 million to buy a, a thousand units in Florida. Uh, those thousand units, I have never paid a penny to own those units. They have cash flowed every month for uh, 12 years now. You got your initial investment back, you're saying, already. I got $12 million back uh, mm -hmm. four times. Mm -hmm. I got my 12 million back plus 38 million. Mm -hmm. Non-taxable event. Mm -hmm. I still own the asset. The asset mm -hmm. pays me $1 million every single year I own it. Cash flow, mm -hmm. free cash flow. And mm -hmm. the asset, that asset today is worth, uh, I paid $58 million. It's worth probably closer to $225 million. Mm -hmm. Show me one home that has ever done that. <laughs> Bitcoin can't do that. I'm with you. I'm with and you. That, that there could be better you know, investments. You're asking for the whole story rather than just like, Grant, Grant says never buy a house. You know. Well, I mean, I think I read between the lines of what you're saying. There are better investments out there, uh, you know, than a home. So for the for just to clear, just to end that part of it, renting, right? You're saying renting better than buying. You're still throwing, you know, your rent, you know, out the window every month. You know, what, what do you I, say? I don't. I don't see it as. I don't see it as throwing rent. I don't see it as wasting money, right? Mm -hmm. I see it as a place to live. I'm paying for a place to live. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't see it as a waste of money any more than groceries or a car. A car, a car is a waste of money based mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Based on what realtors say, I should go buy the car dealership. You know? As, as in be the builder? You mean as in like be the builder? Or be the be the broker? What do you mean by that? No, I'm saying uh, people say, oh, you got to live someplace. Okay, you got to drive a car too. Doesn't mean you go buy mm. the car dealership. Mm. You know, you need health care. Mm. You need a hospital to go to. Doesn't mean you're going to go buy the hospital. Like, yeah. you get in, you get out. I think maybe and, some and people awesome. want a place that they know they're going to be at for a while. You know, okay. they don't want the, the fear of being kicked out. They sell the property, uh, rent continuing to go up, et cetera. Dude, if you pay your rent and you keep paying the increases, ain't nobody going to kick you out. Keep it real. Okay? Keep it real. Like, I own 12,000 units. We don't kick people out. You know, well, that's happy, to make it You've bought homes. You've lived in homes you've bought. You've made money with homes. You've yeah. used that money to buy other better investment than homes. Through that process, you realize that might not be the best place to put my money. I know Ryan. I interviewed him. You know, he, he, he is... He'll never buy a home. Yeah, Ryan Seiko like will never buy a house. Okay, I don't think Ryan would buy a house if he had all the money I have. Because he doesn't want the responsibility. That's the other yeah. thing that people don't talk about. You lost your mobility. You signed a 30-year contract. 
people would not sign a 30 year contract where they work. Mm. Okay. If you get a jail term, do you want it to be 30 years or 10 months? Right. But that's what a house is, dude. You're locked up. Right now, we're in a market where you really don't want to be locked up in a house right now. Yeah, and a lot of people are. They're sitting on 3% rates. Yeah, and if they you're can't sitting on a, But, but they, I got buddies that they got a 3%, and they're like, man, I wish I didn't have this house right now. Mm. And I can't get rid of it because of the 2.8. Every asset becomes a liability. The low why, interest they, why, did, why don't they sell it and rent? Because they shouldn't. Because because the, the, the low rate, they should rent it. What they should do is rent it. Mm -hmm. and rent <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so they should get income like i got a buddy he's got a place here his, his payment's 12 grand a month i said bro you can rent this house for forty thousand. okay mm -hmm. after HO fee, hoa property taxes you'll still net about fifteen thousand bucks a month mm -hmm. you should rent the place to somebody else and go rent another place and use the fifteen thousand to reduce the, the rent at the next joint and get all the write-offs from the first place. Mm -hmm. So the market right now, <clears throat> I want to dig into that because you know we're getting we're getting into it here. Um, you know, we only got twenty five more minutes or so, but I want to I want to really get into the market. You know, there's the commercial side, there's the apartment complex side, there's the you know the office you know uh, crash that we're you know, seeing coming, you got the residential market where prices are still hitting all time highs, you know, inventory, you know, basically at all time lows and all this and that. What's your take on the, the entire market right now? And what are you looking at in terms of taking advantage of it? It's amazing, man. It's going to be amazing times. You know, there, there was a guy that said it was one of the Rothschilds that said, I think it was Nathan Rothschild that said, hey, when there's blood in the streets, bye even when it's your own blood. Mm. So there's going to be tremendous amounts of damage done. Uh, Jerome Powell, an extension of Anthony Fauci. Uh, I, I've said for three weeks now that interest rates would breach 8%. They breached yesterday. Mm. This is going to be Anthony Powell, uh, Jerome Powell, Jerome Powell, sorry. <laughs> You're getting them mixed up. Yeah, well, they're the same people, bro. Uh-huh. They're, yeah. they're, they're both, both of them had a goal of shutting this country down. Mm. And, you know, Jerome Powell, I know your audience is going to disagree with me. They're like, oh, my God, he's trying to control inflation. That, that, raising interest rates has never controlled inflation ever in the history of mankind. You're going to go back to Paul Volcker. The argument's going to be, oh, Paul, Paul Volcker controlled inflation. He caused two major recessions. It took 11 years to actually get inflation down, okay? And he caused two recessions along the way, terrible recessions. If it takes you 11 years to solve a problem, you didn't solve the problem. What's the answer to so, controlling inflation? Well, inflation is caused because you printed money, released the money, and then the stupid people spent the money. Mm -hmm. Inflation is not caused by simply printing money. Mm -hmm. OK, by the way, inflation is actually good for people that own assets. Right. Out of control inflation is not good, but I would rather have inflation than deflation. And we will have deflation in this country for longer periods of time than we have inflation. I want the price of my homes or my assets going up, not down mm. and not flat. So right now, the average, you know, Jerome Powell will create, he, for a guy that owns a bunch of rental property, he is a dream come true. He is my best friend right now. He will create more uh, renters in this country than any other time in the history of our country for 225 years. We will become a renter nation because the average person can no longer afford a $4,500 mortgage, mm -hmm. can't afford a $100,000 down payment. Mm-hmm. And so if they can't do that, what are they going to do? They're going to rent. Yeah. So office is going to get hammered, but at some point office will be a steal. It will be a great purchase. People should be looking at it. I said this during COVID about retail when retail was like, Oh my God, nobody's ever going to go to a store again. 
Retail will be a great investment. Retail is actually the best performing real estate class in America today on a cash flow basis. Multifamily will go through a big dip here for the next 18 months because loans are coming due only because the loans are coming due, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then in 2025, rents in this country are going to go like this. Mm. Anybody that owns apartments in 2025 to 2032 is going to get so rich. It's going to be freaking, it'll be, it'll be unbelievable. Mm. The single family residential home, uh, if you have a great location and a new asset and it's done, you're always going to make money in it. All this mm -hmm. old, all the old stuff. Not only are we 4 million homes short in this country, but the old stuff nobody wants. The old all stuff, the older all homes. The old stuff, the 1960 house in Tampa. Uh -huh. Nobody wants to move into that house, dude. Yeah. They want new construction. They want new goodies. I want new air condition, a new mm -hmm. pool. I want new glass doors and windows. I don't want the old stuff. I don't want my mama's house. I want a new house with new technology. Yeah. So not only are we 4 million short in this country, we're probably another 40 million short of desirable product. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we have zero affordable. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Do you uh, do you think we're going to go through this massive recession with foreclosures and uh, you know, unemployment and things like that? I don't think we go through a. Th this is not the housing crash of 2008. Yeah. I've said since the very beginning of this, there will be no housing crash in America. I mean, even if we did run towards foreclosures, I'll just do what they did in COVID, right? Do a moratorium on foreclosures. There won't be a foreclosure. Yeah. Yeah. There's two. 90% of the loans are under 5%. I think 50% yeah. of them are under 4%. And uh, like 40% of them are under three. There's not, yeah. there, there'll be no foreclosures in America on this cycle any yeah. more than there, all, you, there, there always has been. So the dip in apartment complexes. All right. So loans are coming due, right? But rents are still really high and vacancy is still very high. We don't, right? we don't like to say rents are really high because I don't think rents are high. Yeah. I think if you go to Singapore, UK, you go to Sydney, Australia, you're going to be like, these rents aren't high. Our, mm -hmm. our average rent in our portfolio is about 2000 bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, did Ryan show you that Paragon deal we're doing? I'm, hey, I'm yeah. buying a brand new deal in Chicago, 500 units. The rents are 2600 bucks, and you would you would move your family in there tomorrow. Concierge mm -hmm. service, swimming pool, a 91 walk score. The average rent in that building is 2628 dollars. Brand new building, glass and steel, across from Grant Park. It's how phenomenal. big are the units? 500. So I'm paying 150. Yeah, I mean, million how big are the actual units? Like how many square foot? Are 760 the unit, uh, square feet. 700 square feet going yeah. for 2,600 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's small. I'm paying 150 million to build that building today, today would, would cost uh, probably 600, 300 million bucks. You're developing it. It's already developed. Yeah. Oh, you didn't build it. Oh no, I don't build anything. Okay, okay. You're you're buying it existing. Wow. That's a small unit. I don't think it's small for Chicago, downtown, 91 walk score. It's what people yeah. want. Where do you live? I'm in Gulf Shores, Alabama. Yeah, bro. Yeah, but you see, yeah, you're like, I gotta have a yard. I need some mosquitoes <laughs> my damn ankles. I need I want to be able to have some pecan trees. You ever been here? I know I know Alabama, man. You ever been to Gulf Shores though? On yes. The beach? Yeah. yeah. That's where I grew up. That's where, that's where I yeah, live. We own, we own a thousand units down there. Yeah. And Fairhope. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, um, I think we got 400 units at Fairhope and then we got a bunch of stuff in, in, the, in the panhandle. Okay. Um, no, nah, so, so that this, but I'm interested in this dip, right? Like how, yeah. how much of a dip do you really feel like we're going to see? You're looking at the numbers. You know what interest rates are now compared to what the loans that are coming due is. You know what? You got a good idea of what the rent, the the, the cash flow is. How, how bad do you think um, it's going to get hit? It's going to be on some of, the, on some of these it's deals. It's going to be the greatest single. 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, in, in apartments? Yeah, apartment complexes. 
No, it, it, it won't. I don't think it hits 30. 10. Because, because there's so much money sitting there waiting to purchase income producing assets. Yeah. The real opportunity right now is not the price. It's that nobody else can. It's that you get a chance. Regular yeah. people would actually get a chance to buy this stuff. And right. the reason that is, not, I mean, the price will be an opportunity. But the real, op like this deal in Chicago, if this was a year ago, I would have to pay $280 million to buy this. I'm paying 150. I'd have to pay another 80%. And I wouldn't get it because Goldman Sachs or JP Morgan would. Uh -huh. Not only am I getting a lower price, but I'm, I actually get to, to, to buy the asset because the institutions can't purchase anything right now. And that is the real benefit. They can't come to the table because they, they have a bunch of problems across all the platforms. Mm. Let me see if I can show you this right now. Let's see if I can show you this. No, I can't. Maybe I can't show you. I know, I've never used this streamline. Let's see if you go if you go down to present. Do you see present at the bottom? Yeah, yeah, I do see present. Yeah, there you go. I got so many slides open, man. Entire yeah. screen. See this? Let's see. I don't see anything yet. So let's see. No. Let's see. No. no. Let's see. When you present, you go to share screen, and then at the bottom will say share. Once you've picked, you have to pick the window or pick the uh, share thing. Share screen. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to see your tips again. Share the screen. Window. Hey, real quick, I'd love it if you join my text community so you can be updated on all these great interviews and events and training sessions and just motivational quotes that I send out every single week. You can do that by texting me at 251-312-8844, or I'll just put a link in the description. Entire screen. Oh, there it yeah. is. In the bottom share. Let's see. There we go. Got it. Look at that. That's apartments, bro. That's not an wow. office. Wow. Wow. I'm paying three hundred thousand a door. If I was to build that today, it would cost six hundred grand a door. Mm. Is it two bedroom in the seven hundred square feet? Uh, Fifty percent are one bedrooms and studios, and the other forty-eight percent are two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. It'll make it'll make the investor five and a half percent in year one. And if these rents go up a thousand dollars in the next seven years, which I think they will, and they're thirty six hundred bucks. Um, the building, the building makes about uh, seventy five million dollars. And you're getting it for one fifty. Yeah. Mm. Have you already raised for it? Is it already is that round over? I'll close this deal in. In the next uh, 30 days, we'll close this deal with all cash. No debt. And you're, you're taking that, you built, you, you, you raised specifically for that building or you have a fund? Yeah, we have a fund. We have a fund that's open and my, my, my investors trust me. I tell them what I'm looking at. Once a month, we do a, a Zoom call. I'm like, these are the deals I'm looking at. It's a private Zoom call and we're in the marketplace. I, I looked at, I probably bid on 80 deals to get this one deal. 80, eight zero. Tell everybody really quickly, like the the whole just the the quick version of what you do with this, right? Like say, say some people are watching that want to invest in this building. Okay. Um, give everybody just a quick rundown on how that what that looks like. Yeah, so uh this is a 10-year hold. We could sell it before then, but typically it's 10 years with discretion to go another 10 years. You're a passive investor in the property. Um, you have no say so. I'm running control on it. We manage it. We buy it. We fund it. I actually fund it with my money and then I open it up to the marketplace at the same price that I bought it at. Um, in this case, we will not use debt. We'll pay cash. We don't let any institution invest alongside of us. We do this with every day, the Ricky Carew family, Grant Cardone family, my nieces, my grant, my, you know, my people that are connected to me, my partners, investors, family members, friends, and followers online. This has never been done before at this scale. Um, we put our name on it. It'll probably, this will be Paragon 
which means excellence uh, by Cardone Capital. Uh, we'll get a lift. Uh, we think we get a tenant lift because uh, of the brand 10X and, and Cardone Capital get actually an audience lift. We allow the people that live there to invest alongside of us. And uh, we cash flow the property. We distribute to our investors every single month. We sent, we'll send $5 million out this year, this month. I'm sorry, not this year, this month. Last month, we sent out $4.5 million, 4.4 the month before that, 4.3. Like we'll send out, you know, close to $60 million in distributions this year. The goal on this property is three to four, maybe five years from now, we'll refinance it or finance it and return half the capital to our investors and mm -hmm. still own the property. Once interest rates go down. Yeah. What's the cap rate at 150? Five and a half. Mm. On today's so, rents. So it's got you kind of getting like the, uh like 10x lift. It's kind of like the Trump lift back in the day. Yeah, that's right. How's that feel? Well, I'm gonna, what feels good is the plan. The plan is to do this. We're at 12,000 units. The next time you and I talk, I'll be at... Um, the next time we do a podcast, I'll be at 25,000. And in, in, in five years, we'll be at probably close to 100,000 units and be one of the largest multifamily owners in the country. Who is the largest right now? Uh, there's three guys. MAA's uh, one of the big guys. Uh, uh, Jonathan um, Morgan Group. Uh, you got a bunch of guys out there. You got um, Camden. They probably own 78,000 units. But mm. all these guys use institutional money. They use right. pension funds, sovereign funds. Mm -hmm. And nobody's ever done what I've done, which is... You take, you take as little as 5,000 bucks. Yeah, we're going to probably increase that. That's the, that's who we got the lawsuit from. But the people that I wanted to help the most end up being the you know the biggest pain in the ass, and that's that's yeah. the people that need the, the help. Really, I mean, that's who needs passive income. The beautiful thing about real estate agents is typically a real estate agent, if they're spending 150 hours of real estate, you qualify as a professional real estate agent. Yeah, and all the passive income. Mm -hmm. that I send back to you and the depreciation that we send, mm -hmm. you can write off against your other income. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we share all the depreciation, Ricky, with our investors. I get the same passive income return you get. Uh, our fees are only 1%, which is less than most of the in institutions that manage trillions of dollars, by the way. I handpick the deal, manage the deal, Find, uh, negotiate the deal, negotiate the funding. Like I work my ass off on these deals. I'm a freaking animal. Everybody knows I'm a beast. I'm 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 your partner that's fighting for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we, and, and we squeeze these properties for everything we can to to cash flow to our to our investors. Because the goal for me is we have thirteen thousand investors. I want a hundred thousand, hundred thirty thousand investors, mm. and I want to send out you know tens of millions of dollars every month. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing that makes more uh, loyal fans than a check every month. Yeah. They're like money. Give me the money, bro. So <clears throat> I want to get into a couple things before we end. Number one, I want to talk about 10X Health, but also I want to go back to the 10X rule book. And you're, you said that's kind of how you transition from car automotive business to more general to the masses and stuff. Um, talk a little bit more about that because I am in, I'm, I'm like a top three real estate agent influencer. There's Ryan Serhant, there's Tom Ferry, there's me. Yeah. Um, and I'm just the king of the agents, right? And I've thought about transitioning into more general stuff because what I do works for everything. Yeah. Well, of course it works. You know, you just got to, you know, you you have to you have to know you have to have confidence in yourself to slide over. Some people talk about the riches are in the niches. No, they're not. The riches, I mean, real wealth is on the superhighway. Mm -hmm. It's only controlling both lanes, the ditch, the village roads, the airports, the bus stations, fucking everything. Amazon is not a niche business. Mm. 
So, so that's how you did it though. You, you, you were like, I'm going to write a book and this is going to no, be not really, I didn't, it wasn't about the book, the book, okay. the book was my own therapeutic session about what I had to do to scale. So how did you trans, how did you transition from one well, vertical to a more broad audience? Well, if I start giving you too much advice, I'm going to have to charge you for this <laughs> coaching session. But if I were you, what I would do is immediately slide over and start talking to more than agents. What's what's consistent with in, uh, uh, real estate, insurance, everything, honestly, anything, doctors, dentists, mm. chiropractors. How do you build a business? How do you scale a business? How do you mm. tell a story like, you know, I would just talk, start talking to more than real estate agents. Yeah, because most of your audience, no offense to the real estate agent. Will not be a real estate agent by the time the game's over. Yeah. They're going to end up being something else. I mean, they'll go and try multi-level marketing. They could end up being a coach for me. <clears throat> they could end up whatever. Like, you know, you, you, you got to slide over. You got to just start talking a little less about three bedrooms or four bedrooms, the product mm -hmm. itself, and start talking about, you know, what it takes to build a business yeah, and to be successful. Well, that's what I talk about, but it's more so yeah. how to build a business as an agent. Yeah. It's just, you know, the more gigs you take from EXP or Remax or whoever it is, the more you're going to get typecast into being, um, the real estate one guy, trick, a one trick pony. Yeah. So, bro, and the other thing I would tell you is this, the, the best thing I, one of the best things I ever did in my career was quit speaking to, to on stages mm. for, for hire. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, uh, because then you got to do what they want you to do. Talk about what they want you to talk about, et cetera. You mean yeah, Ricky, man, come talk to our agents, Ricky. And you're like, oh, this is cool. It's not really cool. It's not even a business. It's yeah. basically you're a performer. Yeah. You know, it's cool. It's it's good and everything. People say, oh, man, that was great. That was awesome. But that's not a business. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we've in the last 12 years, I went from being a speaker and a consultant to rarely speaking and almost never consulting. You feel like there's a bigger opportunity for eyeballs just online? No, I think there. you got to build a business around Ricky. Yeah. That's scalable exitable you know mm -hmm. the other thing is when i i remember the first apartment building i ever bought was in 2000 uh, late 90s and i was so proud because the the bank wanted to give me a loan and i said well let me let me show you my financials of my little company and he's like we don't need to see your financials i said what do you mean he's like we know we know who you are we know what you're doing you got a little consulting company make a couple million bucks a year you got a good credit score, but we don't need your financials because we're going to make the loan based on the 48 units, not based on your personal financial statement. I was like, mm. God damn, you, you guys don't even value my financial statement. Mm. And that's when I realized I wasn't a business. I was a I was a uh, I was a one trick pony. I was being paid for a talent and a skill. And that's cool. But. Everybody, even if you're Tom Brady, dude, sooner or later, they're not going to pay you anymore. Yeah. EXP's not going to bring you back again. Yeah. They already had you. They used you, they had you, and they're going to replace you. Mm-hmm. 10X Health, how how well, how well how good do you feel right now? Because you look much better than you did five oh, years ago. Why you, gotta make, why you got to talk about how I used to look? Man? Just say <laughs> I look good. I, I saw the Dana video, all that stuff. I've been researching Gary. Um, yeah. It's amazing stuff, man. Well, yeah, look, Gary's our spokesman, but this is more than about Gary Brecka. Yeah. Um, this is about your health mm -hmm. and, and, you know, giving people an alternative to the health care, the broken health care that we have in this country. And all they're doing is medicating people and everybody knows it. Now, yeah. if the people keep participating in the bad foods, not knowing what you're eating, what you're feeding your kids, the Skittles and the Cheerios and the 
enriched breads that we don't even know what we're putting in our body. I mean, people talk about misrepresentation. You ought to look at the food companies and, mm. and big pharma. So people are trying to take a pill to fix themselves. That's not what's going to fix you. Okay. There's no testosterone, HGH, or no medication that is going to get you that right there. You get, that, that requires you to go to a gym and actually pull a bar up. In addition to that, there's things that people need to give themselves, to get themselves in a direction of 10x health. Like I'm going to 10x my health. You have to make that commitment first. You know, and, and then and then what we do is we provide, first of all, a um, genetic test to find out what foods you can actually consume and what foods you can't. Two, we then provide you with supplements and a plan for 90 days. Just give us 90 days. Mm -hmm. Give us 10 weeks. Give us 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. That's all Dana said. I said, Dana, give us 10 weeks. He said, bro, I can do anything for 10 weeks. And it got him, it got him on track. Weight loss got him in great shape. He didn't want the abs he has now. He just mm -hmm. wanted to feel better. Yeah. Guy couldn't bend over, dude. He couldn't tie his shoes. Mm -hmm. And he said all this, by the way. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not disclosing any private information. But we've done this for a lot of extremely, like I could start listing off names. Every name I would give you. Every person listening right now would know these people. So we bought the company, dude. I bought the company because of what it did for me and my family. Yeah. What it did for my kids was phenomenal. My kids were, my, my little girl, Sabrina, had dark circles under her eyes because there was a, a couple of foods that she could not process. Her genetics, mm -hmm. different than mine, by the way, even though she's my kid, could not process some things that we had in our, in our pantry. Wow. Yeah. And then there's the, you know, there's the other stuff that we do that, that it's a little more uh, uh, cutting edge around uh, pain, joints, injuries mm -hmm. um, for, for VIP people that want to really like there's some other technology stuff that we do both inside and outside the country. That's re really uh, very advanced and, and cutting edge. Yeah, no, I, I've watched, I've researched a lot. It's it's some cutting edge stuff. So you got insurance, health, real estate, education. Like, well, are you done? Are you are you still at? Are you what, what are you going to do next? The only thing done in me is my lap. The last four letters of my name. <laughs> so I'm not done, dude. I'm just getting started, bro. This is yeah. this party just started. Mm -hmm. This is early innings. You know, the goal is. And I always make I always make my goals um, public, and and some people don't like me because of that because they're like, oh my god, you're always bragging about what you want to do, okay? Mm -hmm. But when I make it public, I have to hold myself accountable, mm -hmm. and I like the connection. I like people he hearing me say, I'm gonna fill a stadium up with thirty four thousand people, and I've never done it before, and I have no clue how I'm gonna do it. Uh, but we're going to build, I'm going to build the largest real estate portfolio in America mm -hmm. that is controlled by everyday people. It's never been done before. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to raise, we've raised a billion dollars. We're going to raise $10 billion in cash. I will become a bank. Mm -hmm. And I will compete with the JP Morgans and the Morgan Stanley's of the world. 10 billion doesn't get me there. So I got to get way bigger than that. Uh, in my final days on this planet, no one will ever know me as a salesperson or a marketer. In 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 a hundred years from now, that that'll just be legend. Uh -huh. That'll be how I started. It will not be the ongoing what Cardone is as a company. So uh, we expect to go public with some stuff this year, uh, not this year, but next year. We'll we'll the goal is to raise another ten billion dollars for small business owners from the public markets uh, using crowdfunding technology rather than using Wall Street where people are held hostage and taken advantage of. Uh, so that front will also go on while we continue to ramp up the real estate. Yeah. So what, so what are you going to be known as? Not a marketer, not a salesperson, but I'll be known as a banker, a banker. Yeah. There'll be a, there'll a banker, be a, the bank, the bank of Cardone. <laughs> the bank of Cardone. Yeah, it'll, it'll be a financial institution. We'll have financial mm -hmm. services, insurance, yeah. and healthcare, and 
But this is just nobody believes it, right? Because, you know. Well, nobody would have believed what 10 years ago, what you've got it, it was, now. It was all just a dream, <laughs> you know? But, you know, you just keep applying hard work to the dream, getting good people around you, collaborating with people like yourself to get a bigger audience and, and, and have a bigger voice. And, and along while you do that, it's like turning the lights on at your house down in the Gulf Coast, man. You turn your lights on at night, mosquitoes are coming. Mm. The bugs mm. are coming. And in the real world, when you get successful, the haters are coming. Mm. Yeah, I've noticed that. Um, when I hit 100K on YouTube, the freaks really come out. You haven't seen nothing yet. I was having, I, I, I had a, meet, a dinner with Tom Cruise one night. And I said, Tom, my wife says to Tom, Tom Grant's got a lot of haters and Tom Cruise starts laughing his ass off. <laughs> he laughed nonstop for probably 25 <laughs> seconds. And I was like, Elena, stop it. Okay. The, the number of haters I have compared to him is mm -hmm. nothing. What he's been through mm -hmm. in comparison is nothing. Mm -hmm. And, and what he's been through compared to what Jesus went through is nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, all great movements have haters. Mm -hmm. By the way, for anything to be great, for anything to end up great, you had to have haters along the way. Yeah. So how do you block that out? Because most people won't even start creating content because they see the hate that you get and Tom Cruise gets on their post. And they're like, I don't want no part of that. Yeah. Right. This is how why you... I think our parents just told us, you know, hey, avoid the limelight. Be seen and not heard. Don't get it too much attention. Because they, they didn't they didn't want to. They don't want to do this. this is why rich people, by the way, don't share anything because they don't want the heat. Mm. They keep to themselves. And the problem with that is because the rich people, the super rich keep to themselves, they also don't share the strategies mm -hmm. and the secrets and the investments and the hacks that would help so many people. And it's why Elaine and I have all, all just made an agreement amongst ourselves to always, no matter how big we get or what happens, share everything along the way, regardless of the price we got to pay while we do it. Well, those super rich people that don't share their secrets, they got super rich without having to create a personal brand. Right. I don't well, think yeah. you and I actually had the luxury of no, that. Most of them had to create a brand. Mm -hmm. JP Morgan had to create a brand. And then he rebranded himself because it became something bigger than that. If you go study, you should go read the books about the guys that really made this country, who built the railroads. See how they started, bro. They all started. They all started as like very similar to rough, ragged, jagged Vanderbilt. St study the story about um, what's his name? Vanderbilt, the Vanderbilt, um, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Dude, the guy was a goddamn. He was a. He's a damn fighter. He was a he was a brute, you know. So, the, 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 these people that started dynasties and legacies did not start out as polished diamonds. Yeah, well, I guess the point I'm trying to make for the people listening who are scared to start creating, right? How does Grant Cardone, you know, block out all the hate? Yeah, you know. How do you how do you become numb to that? Is it something that builds over time that it used to bother you? No, I think. Well, let me just say that I think the people you guys, you're not going to start because your, your your dreams aren't big enough. Your goals aren't big enough. Your food's been inflated more than your ideas have. The cost of goods is inflated more than your mind is. You need to inflate your concept of life and possibility and dreams because you're not going to start to get what you have. And you're not going to start to get a little more than what you have because the quality of your life isn't going to change. You're like, shit, it ain't worth it. Yeah. So, so what? You get a bigger house. You get a bigger car. You mm -hmm. get more money. Nobody cares about any of that stuff. You're like, I already got the car. I already got the house. I already got enough money. I got enough until it's not enough. So either the goal has to get really, really big and change the quality of your life significantly. Like, like if you want a billion dollars, how would your life change? Mm -hmm. Okay, like, oh, I don't need all that. Yeah, but if you want a billion dollars, would your life change? Would your home change? 
would the, the quality of your parents' life change, your neighbors, your kids, like everything would change or, or something's wrong with you. Oh, no, I'd give all the money away. Good. Well, then, then your charity would change by one billion dollars. And that would be worthwhile to go get attention so that the things that you love the most could change significantly, not by a little bit, because nobody's going to do anything for a little. And so that's number one. Number two, you guys need to start. Procrastination is a fancy word for just not doing it. And, and, and procrastination <laughs> is... Your big word for, oh, yeah, I got to do it perfect. Perfection is in arrogance. It's just another word for arrogance. Because I never try to do it perfect. Look at any of my material. Dude. I got books that still have misspelled words in them. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife constantly reminds me that I say words incorrectly. I'm like, baby, I'm one of the highest paid speakers on planet Earth. And I get to say it any way I want now. So... You know, like nobody, I never try to pretend to be perfect. There's so much freedom in not being perfect. Yeah. Then I get to just do it. <laughs> and by the way, a bigger audience, a bigger audience likes the guy can, that can just do it. And I know the last thing I'll say about that is that frequency beats perfection. The, the, the amount of times quantity beats quality mm. on this planet quantity mm -hmm. always wins that's how yeah. you end up with starbucks and wells fargo they're they're not great companies or great products but they're but they're very they provide quantity mm -hmm. of location availability so people that are scared to start creating content to build their business basically do, don't have big enough goal. There's nothing, there's nothing significant enough of a reason for them to do it is basically yeah, you're what you're, mm -hmm. you're like, Oh, I, God, uh, I, need to pay, I need to pay some college debt off. That's not even a goal. Yeah. But that's, that's you trying you to be it. thinking, I want to become a millionaire. I want to have 10 million, a hundred million. You got to be thinking, I need, yeah. I want to solve the world's problems. You need to be thinking 10 times bigger than your, standard of living because if you're just thinking about your wife your husband your kids your house you're selfish these are selfish self-serving goals mm -hmm. 10x is not self-serving is how do i help the 10 families next to me mm -hmm. how can i make a difference bigger than me bigger than my car my house i'm not thinking about my car my house guess what i'm thinking about how do i reach 8 billion people and that will solve all my house problems I remember I was uh, I started saying it earlier. This dinner you had years ago, I saw the video, and you you had a dinner at some restaurant with Ty Lopez. You remember this? Yeah, I don't remember it. Yeah, you you were at you were at dinner somewhere at a restaurant with Ty Lopez, and I remember the way that you were looking at him was like you were looking up to him because of his social what he's done on social media. This is back in the day. This is 2013, 14, 15, something like that. Um. You know, now you're you're a household name when it comes to business, entrepreneurship, real estate. Um, but I was going to see if you remembered that dinner because the questions you were, I could tell that you were trying to figure out, you know, what what he knew about social media and how to grow yeah. and and everything else. And you were telling him how how fabulous of a job he was he was doing and everything like that. And now you're basically a household name. It's like since then. Not, not that that was the pivotal moment, but you've continued. And now you're basically way bigger than he is. And a lot of people at this point. Um, well, I, don't, that, I mean, I don't know that I'm bigger or, you know, but I don't. I, definitely are. I'm curious about people. Like, I'm curious about what made people successful. It's why at our conference, you know, this guy, I think this is Trump behind me right now. There's Rick Ross. These are all people that I'm curious about. How did they build their business, right? Lloyd Blankfein, how did you build, how did you become the CEO of Goldman Sachs? Scooter Braun, dude, how'd you do that deal, deal with Taylor Swift? What's the true story? Like, I'm curious. I'm a very curious person. Dana mm -hmm. White, hey, Dana, how did you build the UFC, dude? What are the problems? What are, how do you payroll? How do you pay people? Like, how do you do this? How do you handle the haters, right? Um, I'm just a cu very curious person about 
but now you become this household name, right? Do you, number one, how does it feel, right, to be where you are? Obviously, this was the plan the whole time. And who who was your favorite, speaking of all these people, who was your favorite big name, you know, to, to be around? My favorite big name to be around. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I've done a bunch of interviews. So like Tom Brady, the interview I did with Tom Brady, that was probably the most intense 45 minute interview I've ever experienced in my life. Is he a very serious guy or is he dude playful? Is two guys, playing? not playful at all. Mm -hmm. Two guys. I have never been with somebody more intense. And I know he remembers being across from me. <laughs> um, interview I did with Usher. Now uh -huh. Usher's been on, I don't know, 6,000, 8,000 stages in his life. Mm -hmm. He can't even remember them all. Mm. I did an interview with Usher in Las Vegas. And, and the goal with these with these mega stars, right, is like, are they even going to remember the interview? I, I can tell you, I've been on stages I don't remember. I don't remember the dinner with Ty Lopez. Uh -huh. So my goal is always, I want to make sure this guy remembers me because we paid him a fee. We paid him. He comes. He's probably coming there like, oh, I got to do this thing. Maybe he's slightly curious. It's another fucking gig for him. Mm -hmm. We do the gig. He goes, he goes back, but I, I have to engage him enough to where he's like, Oh my God, that was freaking unbelievable. I mm -hmm. need, I, it's not for the audience. It's for that one guy across from me. I want Donald Trump walking away saying, damn, man, mm -hmm. that guy asked me great questions. Right? Yeah. True story. Usher leaves. He must've gone and looked me up online. Because he was curious because of the interview, because I was curious about him and mm -hmm. I asked good questions. I see him two years later at a Dave Chappelle concert backstage. I come in the room. This is all celebs in the back. This is a bragging moment. Okay. Since you asked me. So I'm in the back. Everybody's back there, dude. Like I'm telling you, like Usher's back there, Chappelle, um, Tiffany Haddish. All these rappers, I don't even, uh, uh, Two Chains, uh, Lil Wayne, like it was mm. whack. I show up, Dave Chappelle's two bodyguards. I walk in and they come rushing at me. They're like, Grant Cardone, man. God damn, I love you, man. God, I've been waiting for you to get here. I saw you on the list, right? So they bring, they're bringing me over to Chappelle. Chappelle doesn't know who I am. And they're going to introduce me to Chappelle. And true story, Usher runs up in his little red outfit, grabs me from Chappelle and says, Grant, I want you to meet my mom. Okay, well, th this is two years after he, we did the thing on stage. So anyway, that was super cool. But probably the, the interview I did with Kevin Hart was the easiest single interview I've ever done. Me and him were just like, because we're both ad-libbers, we're very... Yeah off the cuff it was probably the easiest interview i've ever done mm -hmm. uh, donald trump was one of the most difficult interviews i ever did yeah really i figured that yeah, would have been easy bro no he's 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 because i didn't i didn't want to do politics uh-huh and he's always going to go there uh, -huh. you know? uh this was because he had lost right and 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 so it, it, it was it, like a town hall kind of thing it's just, it's, it's hard to manage him. I mean, he's a freaking, mm. he is, first of all, he's a very big man, mm. but he's way bigger than, than his, his energy is a lot bigger. Mm. Uh, and he, he, he's a hard individual to control. Uh, <laughs> if, you see, if you see the interview, I was really proud of the interview and how it went off. So anyway, I've done a bunch of those. Those are, uh, interviews are very difficult for me. It's one of the most difficult things I do. I do and, um, and it's taken me a long time to get what I think is even close to being fairly good at it. Yeah. Like Stephen Smith. I didn't really love my interview with Stephen Smith. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be great. By the way, it was my idea. I thought Tom Brady was going to be terrible and it was unbelievable. Steve Harvey. You had, you did him, right? I did Steve. Steve was great. Yeah. Steve's one of our clients over at 10 X health, by the way. Mm. he's funny he's hilarious i love that i love him yeah cool bro well um, i'm gonna let you get back to it man i appreciate your time thanks for everything you do
And uh, if I catch you next week, I'll catch you. If not, I'll catch you on the next one. Yeah, the only reason we wouldn't be here, I'd love to see you, but the only reason we wouldn't be here is we're going to go to Chicago. We're looking at two more deals in Chicago. I love the Chicago marketplace for multifamily right now. Is Ryan going with you? Yeah, Ryan will be going with me. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to catch you guys. If you're in town, let us know, and, and things change pretty fast in my world. Yeah, for sure, bro. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. God bless all, all your, your audience out there. You guys go out there, man. Last piece of advice to the real estate agents, okay? Like, man, you got to work harder right now. You got to get way more creative, okay? You need to you need to start talking more like an investor agent, not a residential end user. You got to change your language. You guys have to research making sense of people's finances now. Mm. and you're competing. The residential home is now going to be competing against a 5% treasury bill. You got to understand what that means. You got to learn how to talk to these people about their return on investment and why this thing, uh, why, why this investment makes sense. Let, let, the other thing I'll say is this Re real estate prices, house prices will only come down in this country when interest rates drop, when interest rates drop again, prices are not going to go up. The first thing they're going to do is come down. Because it's going to allow the guy that's locked up in a 3% mortgage to, to, to actually make sense of selling so he can go buy something. Mm -hmm. And that window is only going to be open a very short period of time. Rates will come down and they will come down, by the way. Rates will collapse in your lifetime. They will not be up here at these high rates. Once those rates collapse again, house prices in this country will inflate, but it will not be for end users. It's going to be to investors. Mm -hmm. All the homes in this country will be controlled by people like me. They yeah. will not be controlled by somebody that's going to live in them for 30 years, but somebody's yeah. going to rent them out for the next 30 years. So you think when rates come down, pr home prices are going to come down? Yes. They will because inventory temporarily is going to go come up. down for the, for the bogged up number of people that are backed up in the system that want to sell right now. Mm -hmm. It's going to give them an opportunity to say, okay. You think they're going to sell and go rent? Yeah. Is that what no, you're they're going to sell and they're going to go buy. Right. So, so they're going to put one on the market and take one off. So it's a net even for active listings, right? Yeah, but they're going to drop their price because the other prices are going to come down. Everybody, uh, every seller is going, going to be a flood to of inventory. Yeah. Uh huh. Because it's going to open up the inventory uh, 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 bog. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Most people think, most people think if, if interest rates come down, prices go up. I think if interest rates come down, prices actually come down temporarily. Temporarily, nice little dip. Yeah. Yeah. You heard it from the man himself. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Good luck everybody here, okay? Yes, sir. We'll talk to hey, you soon. And remember, don't what's the what's the word? What's the word? What's the word? Uh it's called uh don't get high don't on your own buy. supply. <laughs> don't buy a house. <laughs> exactly. See you, bro. Love. Thanks. Be good, man. I 35 with a top down, quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like everybody wanna be the boss, but it costs and these lames ain't like me. Drop a couple bands on the